Shalom. First and foremost, I'm going to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'asham, Yahweh, Ba'asham, Rechakwadash. Double honor to the and apostles of great most and ever well. Peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, meaning He is, He exists. All right. Ba'asham. Ba is in ha the Shum name. Yahweh Shai being the name of the only begotten Son, meaning He saves, He delivers. Rechakwadash. In the Holy Spirit, all right. You know, I just want to give all praise on the glory to Yahweh Shemel Shai. Got a lesson at hand through the Spirit, and this is something that I was meditating on at the plantation. All right, you know, in our day to day life, you know, you see it growing up as a Jake. You know, people um, people don't really that people don't like uh, people don't trust you. You know, people don't know you. They don't trust you. They have all these uh, connotations about you, so on and so forth, and um, you know, you know, double f because you know we're contrary to this world. Us as a nation, Israel, we're contrary to the ways of this world, to the fashions of society. You know, we're con we're a peculiar people, you know, but two thirds of our people, all right, they've been seduced by the way of the wicked. So two thirds, you know, they resonate with this world, but still, two thirds still a peculiar people because they're still Israel. We don't fully resonate with the heathen, all right? Now, like I said, two-thirds, they resonate with the heathen because they're being seduced by the ways of the wicked. But the scriptures say what? Proverbs 12 and 26. I'll get that scripture, all right? Proverbs 12 and 26. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor, but the way of the wicked seduces them. Right. So by by nature, Israel is more excellent, you know, than our neighbors, a.k.a. Esau, Edom, the heathen, you know, but the way of the wicked seduces them. So they get seduced by the ways of the wicked, you know, get defiled with these different doctrines and philosophies. That's why the scriptures call the elect virgins, because they were not defiled with women. See, and that's spiritual, it's not literal. All right. Because the scriptures talk about Isaiah 4 and 1, how seven women shall take over one man. And that's and that's meant for the elect, first and foremost. You know, so it's not talking about literally being a virgin. It's talking about spiritually being a virgin. Because when you come into this truth, you're reborn. And then you stick with the Yahweh Bashmael Shai. You know, you don't, you don't wander off into the congregation of the dead. All right. Like two thirds of our people have done. Nonetheless, point being, all right. You know, in this uh, in this day and age, all right, and it's really been this since the foundation of the world, all right. Esau, Edom, they hate us, they envy us, man, all right. And they're watching us, man. They got their eyes privily set against us, and they're watching our every move, man. All right. So pretty much through the spirit, just want to exhort brothers to move with wisdom, okay? Move with wisdom, and to move blamelessly, because you know these heathen. They're watching us, man. All right, this is Deuteronomy chapter 2. I'll start from verse 1. Then we turned and took our journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea, as the Lord Yahweh spake unto me, and we can pass Mount Seir many days. Okay, now this is going back to the time of the wilderness, all right, where our forefathers were coming out of Egypt, all right, and they had to cross through Mount Seir, which Mount Seir is the territory of Esau, Edom, all right, which originally... It was a territory to some Hamites, but the Lord delivered Seir to Esau, all right? J uh, Genesis 32 and 3, and Jacob sent messages before him to Esau, his brother, unto the land of Seir, the country of Edom. Genesis 36 and 8, thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. Genesis 36 and 9, and these are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites in Mount Seir, okay? So that's it right there. Whenever you see Seir, in the scriptures, all right, it's talking about Esau Edom's land, or it can actually be talking about Esau Edom himself because he dwelt there. Same way how Israel is referred to as Jerusalem sometimes, or um, you know Zion, so on and so forth. Okay, you know certain uh, certain um, people are associated with their lands that they come from. You see, but like scripture said, the Lord didn't choose. The people for the place sake, but the place for the people's sake. All right. But well, that's the point right there. But let me go back to Deuteronomy 2 and 1.
as like a two and two. And the Lord Yahweh spake unto me, saying, Ye have compassed this mountain long enough, turn you northward, and command thou the people, saying, Ye are to pass through the coast of your brethren, the children of Esau, which dwell in Seir, and they shall be afraid of you. Take ye good heed unto yourselves, therefore. All right. Meddle not with them, for I will not give you of their land, no, not so much as a foot breadth, because I have given Mount Seir unto Esau for a possession. All right, and that's and that goes to show you the the justice of the heavenly Father, the balance of Yahweh Shemesh. Here it is. He gave Esau Edom a, a plot of land, an inheritance, so to speak. But through his wickedness and how his purpose is fulfilled, Esau Edom is going to get his inheritance taken away. All right, as it tells us in Amos, the ninth chapter. Okay, but nonetheless, in other you know scriptures too, like the book of Obadiah, <clears throat> Obadiah. But nonetheless, what did it say? It says, you're going to have to go to the coast of your brother Esau, and they shall be afraid of you. Take ye good heed unto yourselves. Therefore, that's right, Esau is afraid of us, man. All right? Because why? Because he knows, they know that we are the children of Israel. They know that we're the children of Yahweh Shem Shai. And one thing the heathens do know is that they know, known that from the beginning. Scripture talk about, um, let's see. Is Ezekiel 31 and 9, it says, I have made him fair by the multitude of his branches, so that all the trees of Edom that were in the garden, Eden, like it, all the trees of Eden that were in the garden envied him. And this is referring to Adam, which Adam, he was the progenitor of the sons of God, the nation of Israel. And he gave Adam his righteous way, and he gave the sons of God his righteous way. And that was back then when, you know, the last man. All right, I get another scripture. Because these heathen know, man, they know that we have the true power. All right. Psalms 126, third in that verse. Um, for one, a song of degrees on the Lord, how it turned again the captivity of Zion. We were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord have done great things for them. That's right. Then said they among the heathen. Man. All right. Because the heathen, they know. All right. They saw what our, they saw what the Lord did in Egypt. OK, I'll get that scripture on that. All right. Joshua 2. Turn that uh, Joshua 2 and I'll start at 8. And before they were laid down, she came up unto them upon the roof, talking about Rahab the harlot. And she said unto them, I know that the Lord Yahweh have given you the land, and that your terror is falling upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. For we have heard how the Lord Yahweh dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt, and what you did unto the kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of Jordan, Sihon, all and of whom you utterly destroyed. And as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord Yahweh, your power, he is the Most High in heaven above and in earth beneath. All right, so that's right. That's another scripture right there going to show you that the heathen. Acknowledge the power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah. I'll get another one. Okay. And think about how great this deliverance is going to be because the Lord said that they're going to no more speak about the days when the Lord delivered them, the children of Israel from the land of Egypt. But he's going to, they're going to speak about the times when the Lord delivered the children of Israel from the land of the north, aka Babylon, America, and from the four corners of the world. Roughly paraphrasing, man. <laughs> Jeremiah um, 16 and 14. You know, and there's also another precept like that as well. But that's the point, you know. So think about how great this deliverance is going to be, man. And how much more wrath East is going to come down with, man. You know, because he knows he has a short time and he knows that we're about to get back in rulership. You know what I'm saying? So if they're still speaking about the deliverance of, of from back of uh, Moses, all right, and everybody was in fear and dread about that, how much more this deliverance from Babylon the Great, man, all right, through the Spirit? Let's go ahead and continue. First Samuel chapter 4. In verse 8, it says, Whoa, I'll start at, I'll start at verse 6. First Samuel 4, I'll start at verse 5. It says, And when the ark of the covenant of the Lord came into the camp, all Israel shouted with a great shout, so that the earth rang again. Right. So all Israel shouted with a great shout because the ark of the covenant was in the camp, meaning what? That the Lord was with them, man. 
Okay, because that's the, the part of the Lord's suffering with Israel was with the Ark of the Covenant. But now we have Yahweh Shai, who's our spiritual Ark of the Covenant. But nonetheless, all right, it says, and when the Philistines heard the noise the shout the, of the shout, they said, what meaneth the noise of this great shout in the camp of the Hebrews? And they understood that the Ark of the Lord was coming to the camp. And the Philistines were afraid, for they said, the Most High has come into the camp. And they said, woe unto us. For there have not been such a thing here to here to for well, unto us who shall deliver us out of the hands of these mighty gods. These are the gods that smote the Egyptians with all the plagues in the wilderness. All right. Yeah. So going to show you what that these heathen are afraid of us. And let's, let's say what they smote the Egyptians with all plagues in the wilderness. Well, guess what? We're getting ready to do that again through the spirit and power. Yahweh Shino Shai, because the scriptures talk about how. America is spiritually Egypt and Jacob's trouble is going to be a time where we're dwelling in the wilderness You know, we're in a spiritual wilderness right now Okay, but watch this, this is Revelation 11 But that actually happened, you know back then when you read the you know the Torah what they call the Torah the first five books in particular, you know from Exodus to Deuteronomy You know, but nonetheless Revelation 11 and um, verse and the, and the word for Torah in the Hebrew, which Torah is a Hebrew word, but in the but in the Paleo Hebrew word is Tawara, Tawara, which means teachings or law. All right, now it's Revelation 11, uh, and um, verse three, and I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days, clothed in sackcloth. All right, going into the time. Where we, you know, we're here in Babylon the Great. It was roughly around 350 years. Then the Lord raised up Abba Bivens on the scene, all right, in the late 60s, okay? And that was the that was the time period when the Lord began to start supping with Israel again and giving them the truth, okay? And the two witnesses represent the northern and the southern kingdom, all right? It says, these are the two olive trees that are in two candlesticks standing before the power of the earth. It says, and if any man will hurt them, fire proceeded out of their mouth and devoured their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. Yeah, they, a lot of people in Jacob's trouble are going to be getting killed by way of spiritual power, man. Through the spirit of power, y'all about to shot. Okay? The brothers are going to literally be able to shoot fire out their mouth because we're doing it spiritually, but it's going to manifest physically as well. All right? The brothers are going to literally be able to fly. The brothers are going to literally be able to run super fast, be super strong. You know, uh, be super swift, man. Be invisible, you know. Hey, man, brother's going to be doing. Hey, Yahweh Shai said we're going to be doing greater works than what he did because he goes into his father. And you got to think about it, man. Yahweh Shai did so many miracles that not even all the books of the world can contain them, man. So let that be food for thought, okay? And this is what we have looking forward to, man. All right, but in order to receive that, you have to move with wisdom. You got to be blameless when you're out by strong shot. All right, it says, These have power to shut heaven that it rained not in the days of their prophecy. Going into Elijah. That's what he did. And Yahweh Shai also was able to do that as well. Okay. It says, They have power over waters to turn them to blood. And I say Yahweh Shai was able to do that because, you know, there was a time where they were out on sea and the winds were boisterous and the waves were raging. And Yahweh Shai. Stop the winds, you know, stop the, you know, still the waves of the sea. Okay. So it says, these are power to shut heaven that are rain not in the days of their prophecy. Elijah also did it when he told it that, you know, there's not going to be any rain according to his word, you know, roughly paraphrasing. All right. It says, um, it says, and have power over waters to turn them to blood. And to smite the earth of all plagues as often as they will. Yeah. And that's what Moses did. And Yahweh Shai did a form of that as well when he turned the water to wine. You see? So, spiritual power pretty much. And then going back to that scripture where it says, smote the Egyptians with, with the plagues in the wilderness, in the Egypt. All right? That's that spiritual power. The judgments of the Lord. It says, these are Sakya. And when they, shall, when they shall finish their testimony, the beast shall send it out of the bottomless pit and shall make war against them. Shall overcome them and kill them. All right, and that's what really happened when Esau came back into rulership. All right, and Esau is he gonna try to, you know, overcome us, make war with us again, and try to kill us again. Some brothers are gonna be taken. Some, some will never taste death. You know, till they see how it shy. 
cracking them clouds. So it's in some brothers or sisters' lots to die for Yahweh Shemeshah, be martyrs. All right? But, hey, a lot of brothers and sisters won't. Okay? Either way it goes, call Lime Lime Bashim Hashai. Because, hey, hey, if you didn't have the Lord, you were going to die anyways. So if you do have to die, might as well die for the Lord. And there really is no such thing as death. All right? Because our spirits live on. It's just we, we our, our fleshly bodies, quote unquote, die. But our fleshly bodies get renewed again as well. But we're getting ready to get new bodies, man. All right? We're going to ditch these. You know, we're going to ditch this little shell of ours. All right? And we're going to get new bodies. You know? Because it's time for us to grow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is now Revelation. And um, verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the, in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And that's, that's what's happening now. Going back to two-thirds in the beginning of the lesson, how they're seduced by the ways of the wicked, seduced by the ways of this world. That's those spiritual dead bodies. And we were once spiritual dead bodies too. But the Lord, he quickened us and he raised us from the dead. He resurrected us through his word in, in Yahweh Shai. You know, and as long as we stay in Yahweh Shai, we're always going to bear fruit. But the moment that you step out of Yahweh Shai, you're like, a, you're like a leaf that falls off a tree. The tree going to keep growing, but that leaf fell, is going to wither away. And that's John 15, John's 15th chapter. Yahweh Shai said, I am the vine, you are the branches, so you can no more do anything except you abide in me, you know? Or if we paraphrase it, man, if the branch break off from the vine, it wither away, you know? So, hey, you, in order for you to receive the kingdom, you need your Yahweh Shai. Okay? Now it says, um, it says, and they, it says, it's like if, but the, and he's also spiritually crucified. Oh, it's placed spiritually it's called Sodom and Egypt. It's America because America is spiritually Egypt, going into bondage. And you saw in a couple of scriptures, he's known as the Egyptian. Joel 3 and 19 is what comes to my mind. All right. And the Lord, he's going to put us, punish, you know, Esau and the Egyptian, Edom and the Egyptians, man. That's talking about Esau. He's the modern day Pharaoh. Okay. The wicked elites of the society, they're the modern day Pharaohs, man. And the Edomites are Egyptians. And they're oppressing the children of Israel once again. All right, and that was the, that was the, hey, like the scripture say, I would declare the end from the beginning. That was the beginning of Israel's oppression with the Egyptians, you see? And then it ended off with the Edomites. So the Lord is declaring the end from the beginning, you know? But nonetheless, um, let me continue. And it's also spiritually called Sodom because he saw he practiced uh, homosexuality, you know? That's just a well-known fact. Okay, now it says, and they of the people and, kin and our, our Lord was crucified here because they persecute his image. They persecute his way of life. They persecute his ideology. ideology. They crucify his ideology. Look at what they're doing to the real men of the Lord. All right, because the fake men of the Lord are the ones buying private planes and jets, you know, and, and robbing their congregation of their tithe money. But the real men of the Lord are living meek and lowly. All right. Seem like they're the filth of the world, rather, you know. But hey, guess what? The Lord has tapped into their spirit where they got riches greater than you know anybody, even the wicked elites, you know. Because the spiritual riches is what matters most, and the and the times we're coming into when this dollar is about to crash, okay, what's gonna matter? <laughs> Your federal reserve notes is not gonna matter in that book, faith is gonna be the currency. All right, and faith is really the currency right now because it's up to the Lord whether you get your daily necessities. It's up to the Lord whether you even wake up, you know? So faith is really the currency for every day, all right? But especially during the times of Jacob's trouble, you're going to know that faith is the currency because, you know, your Federal Reserve notes are going to fail. And the only way that you're going to be able to eat, drink, get sleep, get clothed, be fed, you know, whatever, be sheltered, if you will, if the Lord allows, to be taken care of, you know, is what? Yahweh Bashem Al Shai. Because you're not going to have any Federal Reserve notes to pay anybody to do that. Unless you take the jab, unless you take the chip. And, you know, if you're of the elect, you're definitely not going to do that. So, you know, that's how you know that faith is the currency right now. All right. Now, uh, Exodus, it's like your Revelation 11 and um, verse uh, 9. And they of the people and the kindred and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, meaning they saw us in a dead estate for 350 years. All right. 
not knowing who we were, even though they knew who we were. OK, because they try to hide it from us. Psalms 83 says they took crafty counsel that the name of Israel be no more in remembrance. OK, and it says, um, and shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. All right. They didn't bury us spiritually. All right. They didn't put us at rest. You know, it says, and they that dwell because this truth is our rest. You see. It says, and they that dwell upon the earth shall make shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth, man. All right, and that's the point on that right there. Okay, so they were happy because they saw us at our downfall. They saw Israel at their downfall. They saw Israel departed from Yahweh Bashem So whenever the Lord is not with us, we struggle as a nation. All right, now Revelation um, 11 and Verse 11, and after three days and a half, the spirit of Yahweh Shemeshah, the spirit of life from Yahweh Shemeshah entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. Going into how we woke back up through Abba Bivens, the Lord raised up Abba Bivens to preach the truth of Yahweh Shemeshah, uh, all the way down to our apostles today, and then all the way down to us younger brothers, man. You know, and then the, the cycle just keeps going on and on, all right, till we reach the kingdom. Okay, now it says, um, and great fear fell upon them, man. All right. That fear was these elites and these different heathen nations. They're watching us. They see that Yahweh Shemeshah is getting right with us. You know, we're rather we're getting right with Yahweh Shemeshah. All right. And they see and they're like, you know, oh, damn, you know, we can't do anything because they know how, they know about the Lord. They know about his acts and what he's done for us, man. All right. That's why there was a decree even made during the times of Daniel. He said, whoever doesn't worship the God of Daniel, you know, shall be put to death, man. <laughs> and that was a heathen who said that, man. OK. Even Esau, Edom, hum, uh, prideful ass had to humble down, all right, with um one of the, you know, generals in the book of Maccabees, all right, I think it might have been Antiochus, he pretty much said, you know, a man should not see himself as a god, you know, it's fit for a man to not look at him as himself as a god, man, all right, because he was being prideful, and the Lord judged him with a plague, and he was like, man, you know, he had, he had to give the glory to the Most High, and this was an Edomite, all right? Second Maccabees 9 and 11. He therefore being plagued, he began to leave off his great pride and to come to the knowledge of himself by the scourge of the Most High, his pain increasing every moment. <laughs> Can you imagine that, bro? And being in pain and your shit hurt, as the, it hurt more and more as it goes on, man. Damn, bro. That's why it's like the graciousness of the Lord, because here it is. We get our chastising, but the Lord, he does not chastise us like he chastised the heathen, man. All right, he chastised the heathen bad, bad. And I was meditating on that last night. I was like, man, it must. I was like, Esau really got to do worse when you think about it. Because here it is. Esau, he's the basis of men. And, you know, that's what he's always been. The Lord just gave him a little moment to have his fun, you know, for his purpose. But after that, what's what's next? He's going right back to being the basis of men, even worse than before. Like his pain increasing every moment, you know. All the way up to what, you know, these, these devils getting caught up in that bonfire. They get exterminated, man. So really, Esau got it the worst, man. You know, when you meditate on it. All right. Now it says, um, and when he himself could not abide his own smell, he said these words, it is meet to be subject unto the most high. And that a man that is mortal should not proudly think of himself if he were God. That's right. All right. <laughs> So Esau, bitch ass, had to humble down, too. And this story is really heavy. I recommend brothers or sisters read that on your own, you know, for the sake of time. But that's a heavy story right there, man. All right. Definitely heavy story. So without further ado, you know, what what was the objective here? So these heathen, they know that when Yahweh Shemesh is on our side, they're afraid of us. So pretty much we have to take good heed of ourselves because what? You know, the Lord is on our side. The Lord, you know, he's being returned unto Zion, as the scriptures say, since he's put the spirit on us to return back to him. You know, so this, so, you know, we have to move blamelessly and with wisdom. Matthew 10 and 16, behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils and they will scourge you in their synagogues. And you shall, brought before, you shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. When they deliver you up, take no thought how or what you shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what you shall speak, man. All right. Because why? You know, there's going to come a time where Esau's going to roll on us. But, you know, prior to that, we have to move wise as serpents, harmless as doves, man. All right. You know, because, hey, these devils, man, they got the upper hand. 
You know, we're not trying to revolt against them. We're revolting spiritually, but we're not taking up arms and trying to fight back against them. That's not what the true followers of Yahweh Shai would be doing. You see? But when the time comes when they roll on us, then we have every right to fight back against them. But for right now, we have to be wise as serpents, harmless as doves, man. All right? And we're going to fight back against them with the spirit and power of Yahweh Shai, Shai, not of our own might. All right? And that's why they're scared of us, man. Sirach Ecclesiastes 9 and 13. It says, keep thee far from the man that have power to kill. Yeah. All right? It says, so shall thou not doubt the fear of death. And if thou come unto him, make no fault. Meaning, be wise. Make no fault. Because he's watching you, man. Esau's looking, waiting for you to slip up. Waiting for you to get carnal. So he can call the cops on you. Lest he take away thy life presently. Remember that thou goest in the midst of snares. Right? He's trying to trap us up. And that thou walkest upon the battlements of the city. Yeah, we're like tiptoeing off the roof, man, of these of, of Babylon, so to speak, man. We got to walk on eggshells like they like to say. You see? And you got to be careful of this devil because why? His blessing is the sword, man. So if you get caught up in a situation with the police or anything like that, man, move with wisdom and move blamelessly, man. All right? You know, Genesis 27 and 40. And that by thy sword shall thou live and, thy, and shall serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion. That thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. Right. Esau's blessing is the sword. All right. Get another one. Revelation 6 and 4. And there and there went out another horse that was red and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. And that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. And that's referring to Esau, Edom, and rulership, man. All right. These devils are uh, war savvy, man. OK, their blessing is the sword. They're all about deception. They're all about war. They're all about carnality. They're all about enmity and strife. Psalms 41 to the chief musician, a psalm of David. Deliver me, O Lord, Yahweh Bashmel Shai, from the evil man, Esau, Edom. Preserve me from the violent man, which imagine mischiefs in their heart. And that's what they do. They imagine mischiefs in their heart. They don't know the way of righteousness. It says it says which imagine mischiefs in their heart. Continually are they gathered together for war. You see, continually they're gathered together for war, man. All right, this devil is always lurking about seeing how he can trap you up, man. All right, 1 Peter 5 and 8. Be sober, be vigilant, man. Be sober, be vigilant. And part of being sober-minded is moving with wisdom, man. Moving wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. Because when you're drunken, you move belligerent. And when you go into the, to the meaning of the word belligerent, it really means to be aggressive. All right? And a lot of times people, when they get drunk, they get angry, they get aggressive. You see, not saying everybody. I'm just saying. So be sober minded spiritually and physically, man. All right. Not saying you can't have a drink and take the edge off, but move with wisdom, man. All right. That's what it's all about. Be vigilant because you and because you could low key, you know, obviously you're not as sharp as if you were, quote unquote, sober, but you can low key still be uh, vigilant while you're taking the edge off, man. All right. I'll say it like that. All right. Now it says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And this is talking about the spiritual demon Satan, but this also applies to Esau Edom, man. All right. It's Psalms 10 and 9. He lieth and waits secretly as a lion in his den. He lieth and wait to catch the poor, Israel. He doth catch the poor when he draweth him into his net, because he's trying to trap us up, man. All right. He's always looking to slay us, man. Like he said, I'm going to mourn for my father Isaac, but the time will come where I'm going to slay my brother Jacob. And that's his blessing, the sword. Esau always had that perpetual hatred. So you have to move with wisdom when you're around him, man. Never trust thine enemy, man. For as iron rusted, so does his wickedness, man. All right, and especially when you're in the spirit, that's going to anger Esau even more. Okay, he'd rather you be a flat out nigga than you be in the spirit. The scriptures say, he that teaches his son grieveth the enemy. Yahweh Shemesh is teaching us the right way. So we're grieving the enemy because we're moving with wisdom, man. We're moving with the spirit of power, Yahweh Shemesh And Esau knows that he can't do nothing against us because the Lord is with us. Wisdom of Psalm in the second chapter says that. They said, if he be the son of God, he will help him. You know, let us prove his patience. So these devils, they really want to just destroy us, man. So you have to move with wisdom when you're around them. Because right now it's open season on Israel, man. And it's only going to get worse. Okay. Romans 13 and 1, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of the Most High. The powers that be ordained are ordained of Yahweh Shai. That's right. The Lord put the spirit on Yahweh Shai to bless Esau with the sword. And Yahweh Shai is going to be the one to come take down Esau through the spirit and power of the Most High Yahweh. All right. So it says, whosoever therefore resisted the power, 
And the reason why I say that is because the Most High, Yahweh Shemeshai, ordained Esau to be this way. So don't be naive, man. He was built to be the devil. So don't be naive, man. Whosoever therefore resists the power, resisting the ordinance of the Most High, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Yeah, Esau got the power right now. So right now is now the time for us to take arms and try to fight back and overthrow this government and take over this country, man. We don't want this place anyways. The Lord's getting ready to destroy this place, man. All right, and he's getting ready to destroy the land of Israel too, man, with them gutter rats, man. And we're going to get that land back cleansed. But first it has to be cleansed by fire. All right. And that's spiritual. The people are getting cleansed by fire and the land is getting cleansed by fire. All right. The people are getting cleansed by fire spiritually, man. Now, it says, um, for rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil, to the evil. It says, without not that, it says, without then not be afraid of the power, do that which is good and thou shalt have praise of the same. That's right. So rulers are not a terror unto good works, meaning Esau can't terrorize us. You know, if we're doing that, which is right, man, they don't mess with you if you're doing the right thing. So when you're moving around Esau, quote unquote, do the right thing, you know, be wise, man. All right. Get acquainted with the laws of the land and stuff like that, because, you know, you just want you don't want to take any chances, man. All right. Verse five. Wherefore, you must needs be subject. Yeah, we got to be subject to these devils for the time being. Yahweh I said that. Pontius Pilate tried to say, I have power to crucify you and to release you. Yahweh I said, you have no power unless it was given to you of the father, man. Going back to Romans 13 and 1, you know? So, hey, you got to be subject. Just like Yahweh Shai was subject to the Roman Empire, we got to be subject to the modern-day Roman Empire. Wherefore, you must needs be subject not only for wrath, but for also but also for conscience sake. Right. Okay? You want to have a good conscience towards Yahweh Shai. Shai. You don't ever want to look back and be like, damn, I wish I would have done this differently. wish I would have done that differently, you know? Because we don't give a damn about Esau and his laws, man. We're just really abiding by him because we're subject to these devils. You know, Ephesians 5, Esau don't give a damn about his own laws. All right. So you can miss me with that, Esau. All right. Esau, Ephesians 5 and 15. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, man. Circumspect means to look around. Be aware of your, be aware of your surroundings. Be aware of your situations. Be aware of the vibrations people give off towards you. Be aware of the looks certain people give you, man. Be aware of all that, man. All right. Because these devils, man, they're looking to, to do away with us. So we got to take good heed of ourselves, man. Like it says, like we read in Deuteronomy, man, they're scared of us, man. And Esau, he's trigger happy, man. So be wise. All right, Ephesians 5 and 16, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Yeah, we know we're in an evil time, man. We know Jacob's trouble is around the corner. Wherefore, be ye not unwise but understanding what the will of the Lord is, man. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the spirit. All right. That's the point. Of, that's the point right there. All right. We don't want to be under unwise, man. Understand what the will of the Lord is. It's the Lord's will for Esau to come down with that great wrath. So be wise. Philippians 4 and 5. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Moderation. All right. When you go into that. OK, I'll, I'll get it. Lord willing. If the Lord allows. Moderation. All right. Moderation. All right, in the Greek, it's Strong's G1933, all right? And it says, seem suitable, equitable, fair, mild, gentle, appropriate, mild, gentle, moderation, patient. So that's how you want to apply your uh, actions when you're around people, man, okay? Especially around the brothers, especially around people in the world, because people in the world, they know if they know you're a Hebrew Israelite, they want to see you do something wrong so they can blame you. So you got to be gentle. You got to be fair. You got to be appropriate to the situation at hand. You can't be acting crazy. All right. You have to be patient when people are trying, you know. All right. Because that's just a part of them demons wanting to knock you off the path, man. And that's what the demons is doing in the spirit realm. All right. The demons in the spirit realm, they're looking to, uh, you know, try us, you know, blame us towards the Abba Shemel Shai, make us have blame before the Lord. Just like how Esau is trying to make us have blame before the Lord. You see, but hey, the point being what, you know, we have to move gently, moderation, you know, and when you go into the word moderate, it means to be like, you know, uh, at like a, at an easy, uh, as an easy, like bearable pace, you know, this is uh, Philippians 4 and 5, it says in the New King James Version, let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. All right. NLT, let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Remember the Lord is coming. 
NIV, let your gentleness be evident to all. ESV, let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. That's right. So be at peace with all men, as the scriptures say. All right. That's how you should really be conducting yourself. Even if you fucking hate Esau's guts. All right. And Esau hates his own guts. But the scriptures say what? Be at peace with all men. All right. And let me get another one. Galatians 6 and 10, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, unto them who are of the house, it says, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. So you want to be at peace with all men, especially the brethren, all right? And that scripture that I quoted was uh, Romans 12 and uh, 17, recompense to no man evil for evil, provide things honest in the sight of all men, yeah, where they can't blame you because you have an honest report. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I'll repay, see of the Lord. Yes, yeah, so don't be trying to get your lick back on Esau right now. Scripture say, wake not my love till he please. Zephaniah 3 and 8 also says, um, you know, wait, wait until I rise up to the prey. All right. So the Lord is saying, look, wait until I get my first lick. And then, you know, you get your lick back. Verse 20, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirsts, give him drink, for in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. In other words, kill them with kindness, man. All right? Uh, let me get this precept for your spirit. Okay. Learn to kill Esau with kindness. And that's really wisdom. You know? Scriptures say what? A soft answer turneth away wrath. That's wisdom. Proverbs 25 and uh, 21. It says, if thine enemy be hungry, give him bread to eat. It says, and if he be thirsty, give him water to drink. For thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head, and the Lord Yahweh shall reward thee. Right, because the Lord, he's going to reward blameless souls, man. Verse 21, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. That's right. Don't let them demons get the best of you, man. All right. First Samuel 24 and 17. And he said to David, thou art more righteous than I. I brought thou we be of the house of David, you know, and follow King David's steps. It says, for thou hast rewarded me good whereas i have awarded the evil you know and that was king saul all right and two-thirds there of the house of saul okay now um let's see let's go let's go let's go let's go let's go colossians chapter 4 verse 5 walk in wisdom toward them that are without redeeming the time okay that's right so you have to walk in wisdom towards them that are without the wisdom of how about shy be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. The Lord told us, beware of men. Okay, 2 Corinthians 6 and 3. Giving no, offense, giving no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. Yeah, you want to have a blameless report among the Gentiles, man. Where they can't blame you. They can't put no fault on you. Except for that you're just a man of the Lord. And they don't like that. Other than that, they can't say anything bad about you. You do what you're supposed to do. According to the society, right? Titus 2 and 8. Sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Yeah, they should be ashamed because they're contrary to us, but yet they have no uh they have no charge against us, man. All right, they just hate us. You know, like Scripture say, they hated us without a cause. But that's the thing, you want them to hate you without a cause. You want to be blameless, you know. As I said, um, let's see. Let me get this scripture. First Peter three, starting at verse 12, for the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And who is he that will harm you if ye be followers of that which is good? But if ye suffer for righteousness sake, happy are ye and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. You see, it says, but sanctify the Lord, Yahweh by Shemel in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason by the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they may be of shame. They may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Mashiach. All right. That's right. They're falsely accusers, man, because we didn't do anything wrong. According to the society, we're blameless. And we're also going to be found without fault before you are not shy. Like King David said, I am purposed. Let me get that scripture. And the scriptures say what? That the elect shall be found without guile in their mouth. Ooh, that's the spirit. That was Revelation 14 and 5. 
part is. Let me see. Psalm 17, 3 says, Thou has pr proved mine heart, thou has visited me in the night, thou has tried me, and shall find nothing. I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. Right, because the elect found without God, they're going to be found blameless. All right, so Esau, he's not going to be able to, you know, say anything against them, man, other than they're of the elect. <laughs> Who shall lay anything to the mo to the charge of the Most High's elect, the scriptures say. It says, for it is better if the will of the Most High be so that ye suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. For Mashiach also hath one suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to the Most High, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which were sometime were disobedient when... Once they, the long suffering of the Most High waited in the days of Noah while the ark was preparing, wherein few that is, is eight souls were saved by water. The like figure, where unto even baptism doth also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. Yeah, it's not talking about a water baptism, it's spiritual. This is but the answering of a good conscience toward the Most High by the resurrection of Yahweh Shemashiach, who has gone into heaven and on his right hand of the Most High, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. All right, so look, Yahweh Shah, he has a reward. And we'll have a reward as well if we drink of that same baptism. All right. Let me get this next one, Lord willing. First Corinthians chapter three. Starting at verse 10. According as the grace of Yahweh Shemashai, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. Let every man but let every man take heed how he build it thereupon that's right so you have to take heed how you build upon this truth man the type of um rapport that you build up in this truth okay you have to take heed and a part of taking heed is also teaching the right doctrine of course but as well how you conduct yourself outside of the truth when you're not doing a video when you're not at camp when you're not at fellowship you know because like they like to say about a lot of athletes or a lot of boxers in particular is what i'm thinking they say, uh, you know, he he's a he's a good guy in the ring, but outside the ring, you know, he's not a good guy, so to speak. You know, you want to be good in, inside the camp and outside the camp, so to speak. You know, when you're with brothers, when you're around brothers, when you're before brothers' faces, and when you're when you're in behind closed doors before the eyes of Yahweh Shemel Shai and the angels and yourself, you want to have integrity, man. All right, that's what it's all about, integrity. Okay. Now, this is, um, let me get this last one, if it be the Lord's will. Actually, no, it's not the last one. First Thessalonians 4, in verse 12, it says, And that ye walk, that ye may walk honestly toward them that are without, like Scripture say, walk in wisdom toward them that are without, that ye may have lack of nothing. That's right, okay? Walk honestly, man, you know, toward them that are without, okay? Let me see something real quick. Right. It says, um, now let me get this last one, if it's the Lord's will. Let me see. This is Daniel 6 and uh, starting at verse 1. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. Darius the Mede, all right, of the Median Persian Empire. And over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give account unto them, and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes, because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. And the scriptures say what? When a man's ways are pleasing to the Lord, and maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. So you should really be at peace with Esau, for the most part. Esau shouldn't really be bothering you like that. Not saying that that's every brother's cookie-cutter situation. You know, but for the most part, if you're doing what's right uh, by Yahweh, even if that devil does give you hell, he shouldn't really be, you know, striving. You shouldn't be re resisting and striving unto blood, you know, just yet, because we're not in that time just yet. The scripture talk about the hours come, you know, you know, basically they, they couldn't lay our lay hands on us because our hour was not yet come. So we're not at that hour yet. Not saying brothers still can't get hands laid on, you know, but they they they, they can't, you know. They can't put us to death and crucify us like they did Yahweh Shai because his hour was not yet come same way with ours, you know? And our form of crucifixion today will be in a guillotine. You see what I'm saying? Getting our heads chopped off or whatever different type of way Esau put us to death for this truth. You see? Now it says in Daniel 6 and um, verse 4, Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. 
but they could find none occasion nor fault. Why? Because he moved blamelessly for such as for as much as he was faithful. That's right. Neither was there any terror or fault found in him. All right. Right. They couldn't find any error, Slocky, any error or fault. man. He was blameless. He had his conversation honest among the Gentiles. Then said these men, we shall not find any occasion against Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his power, man. That's right. OK. And what does the scripture say about Daniel and his innocency, man? Because when you're innocent, then guess what? That gives you boldness. All right. And the Lord, he's going to give us that boldness in that day when he's going to rise up against us and reward them evil for them trying to reward us evil for our good. Daniel, first uh, Maccabees 2 and 60, Daniel for his innocency was delivered from the mouth of lions. All right. It's not Esau's army likened unto lion's teeth. All right. It says, um, Psalms 58 and 6, break their teeth, O Yahweh Shemeshah, in their mouth, break out the great teeth of the young lions, O Lord. That's Esau Edom, man. All right, and when these different martial arts try to roll on us, the Lord going to break their teeth by way of what? Spiritual power, man. All right, we're going to break the nations in pieces, man. All right? Through the spirit. You know, we're the Lord's weapons in his battle axe, man. All right? Jeremiah 51 and 20, thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. For with thee will I break in pieces the nations, and with thee will I destroy the kingdoms. And with thee will I break in pieces the horse and his rider. Yeah, we're going to take down your martial law troops and the military vehicles, man. And with thee will I break in pieces the chariot and his rider, man. With thee also will I break in pieces man and woman. Yeah, so any type of, you know, weapon, no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper, man. It says, and with thee will I break in pieces old and young. And with thee will I break in pieces the young man and the maid. All right. That's the point on that right there. And so that's the point, you know. I'll finish off. I will also break in pieces with thee the shepherd and his flock. And with thee will I break in pieces the husbandman and his yoke of oxen. And with thee will I break in pieces captains and rulers, man. Yeah, so all your captains and rulers that try to come up against us, same way how you try to come up against Elijah, guess what, man? <laughs> Call fire of heaven down upon you, man. That's the plagues that the Lord was speaking about in Revelation 11. All right. But nonetheless, you know, through the spirit, what did it say? Daniel was delivered from the lion's mouth. Same way how these devils going to try to throw us in a den and we're going to be delivered from the lion's mouth. Abba Rajazah, the Lord, you know, have mercy upon us. So hey, that, with that, I want to give all praise, honor and glory to you. How about Shemel Shai, about Shemel Chakwadash, double honors, the elders and apostles, the great Muslim, everywhere. Peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. Shalom and a Baba Ball.